On today's show, General Motors avoids a strike in Canada, NHTSA announces federal guidelines for autonomous cars, and the AAA says Americans waste billions every year on premium fuel. We do not agree. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. In a big victory for the United States automotive industry, NHTSA is issuing its regulations for autonomous cars. That means federal regulations will set the rules for these cars, not each of the 50 states. Automakers worried that they would face a hodgepodge of different state regulations. NHTSA also established that the computers running autonomous cars will be legally recognized as the driver of those vehicles. That neatly addresses existing regulations that say a driver must always be in control of a vehicle. The regulations are called the Vehicle Performance Guidance for Automated Vehicles. I guess that means the industry now has a new acronym, VPGAV. I guess we're just going to pronounce it VIPGAV. NHTSA will publish its 15-point guideline for autonomous cars later today, and we will publish a link to them in tomorrow's show for all of you who want to read them in depth. While NHTSA was issuing its VIPGAV rules yesterday, some of the top R&D executives in the industry were discussing autonomous cars at SAE Convergence, which is a conference all about electronic technology in cars. One of the hot topics of debate is over level three autonomous cars. Those are the ones that can drive mostly autonomously but require a human driver to intervene in certain situations. Ford and Google have already renounced level three cars and say they're going straight to level four, which can drive autonomously in all situations. It may take a bit longer to develop level four, but they are willing to wait. So what do you think? Do you think it's better to introduce level three cars right now, like Tesla's autopilot? Or should automakers wait until fully autonomous cars are ready for mass production. As you all know, the ride-sharing companies are racing to develop autonomous cars. That's because human drivers represent their highest operating cost. Lyft says that in five years' time, most of its ride-sharing cars will be level four. And Uber announced it's opening an R&D center in the Detroit area. That's a fascinating development. Uber already has an R&D center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, near Carnegie Mellon University, one of the foremost schools in the world in robotics. So why set up another R&D center in Detroit? Well, General Motors, Ford, FCA, Toyota, Nissan, and Hyundai Kia all have R&D centers in the Detroit area. Coming to Detroit would give Uber more access to talent and let it collaborate more easily with those automakers except presumably GM, which owns part of Lyft. But how interesting that Uber is setting up shop in Detroit and not in Silicon Valley. The AAA says Americans waste billions buying premium fuel every year. We say the AAA did not do enough testing. And that is coming up next. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. According to the AAA, Americans waste $2.1 billion every year on premium gasoline because their cars don't need it. It tested three vehicles that require only 87 octane fuel on the EPA's test procedure on a chassis dynamometer and find, found only minor changes in some of the vehicles. Certainly not enough to warrant the 23% increase in cost for premium fuel. But here's some of our AutoLine insight. This test only looks at the short term and does not take into account the quality of fuel. Engine deposits from crummy gasoline can start to form in as little as 4,000 to 5,000 miles, but fuels that meet the top tier standards have more detergents and additives and can prevent, or in some cases, remove those harmful deposits. In our opinion, Shell has some of the best fuel, but will also provide a link for all the fuel brands that meet 
the top tier standards. Oh yeah, one more thing. Automakers say they're going to need premium fuel as the only fuel by 2025 if they are going to meet fuel economy and emission standards. For all you motorcycle fans out there, Honda just launched a new global communications website to promote some models that are slated for future release. There will be short drama films depicting the unique interaction between riders and their bikes. The site is even available in 13 different languages. Coming up next, General Motors announces the price of the Chevrolet Bolt EV, and it does it in a way that every other automaker should follow. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. Yesterday, we reported that GM was facing a strike from the Canadian Union Uniform. That contract was set to expire at midnight, but at 11.59, the two sides reached a tentative agreement. This, of course, is a bit of negotiating theater. Union bosses need to go back to their members and say they took the company to the very last minute. There aren't many details about the new deal, but it will enable new products and investments at GM's three plants in Canada. It now needs approval from union members. And in other GM news, the company revealed the official price of the Chevy Bolt EV. It carries a starting price of $37,495, including destination charges. With the $7,500 federal EV rebate, that drops the price to $29,995. The Bolt will be on showroom floors at select dealers in the U.S. by the end of the year. And we have to commend General Motors for continuing to publish car prices that include destination charges. All the other automakers that omit those charges in publishing their prices ought to be ashamed of themselves. It's outright fraud because no one can buy a car without paying those charges. Anyway, that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for watching. Please join us again tomorrow for the latest news in the global automotive industry.